Hi everyone, and welcome back to Reserved Investments on YouTube. I wanted to put together a video because I do want to talk about the real definition of the term rare and how it's been perverted in the last couple of decades for use by speculators and starry-eyed, unsophisticated investors operating in the antiques and collectibles trade. No matter how many articles I write for Antiques and Auction News, no matter how many videos I would do on this topic, people are still going to refer to certain mass-produced collectibles as being rare. There was a time before the year 1980 in the antiques and collectibles trade where the term rare actually meant an item with less than 25 known examples in existence. Okay? So you had people who dealt in, you know, primitives or certain type of historic items, um, really antique weaponry from like the, the Renaissance period. They had items that there were very few other examples of where if you wanted an item when it came up for auction and you didn't have the money, you were out of luck because it would be years before that same item came up for bid again. Okay? It was that pronounced where dealers operating in the antique trade would be hesitant to call something rare because if it truly wasn't rare or met that definition of standard, they would actually lose credibility in the greater trade where other dealers and a lot of their clients would be like, hey, you're calling this rare. You know, there, there's about 300 other examples of this item out there. This isn't rare. What are you doing? Today, unfortunately, due to the proliferation of pop culture based collectibles and mass market produced collectibles, along with the rise of eBay, calling something rare doesn't have the same meaning today as it did many decades ago in the antiques and collectibles trade. So I'm going to show you guys something. And you don't have to do this. I'm going to do it for you. But if you want to follow along, go to www.ebay.com and right where it says search for anything, right on the homepage, just type in the word rare and hit enter. Nothing else behind it, nothing in front of it, just the word rare and then hit enter. You're going to get over 5 million listings with the term rare in the title. Ranging from everything to, I kid you not, scissors which are deemed rare by this particular seller, all the way to currency, coins, movies, Pokemon cards, Magic the Gathering cards, watches, t-shirts, baseball caps, books, and posters. Now, <sighs> this is quite hilarious, some of these listings. Anyway, the term rare has been perverted so many times thanks to a lot of the speculators operating in today's present day marketplace, that it bears repeating that almost all the items that people are referring to as rare are anything but, okay? I have some examples here I'm gonna go through because I want your mind to think in these terms, okay? So I'm gonna start, and there are some surprises in some of the items I'm gonna show you here. I just have four items I'm gonna show you, okay? And I'm gonna ask you, do these really meet the definition of rare? Because I have seen all of these items listed, either on eBay or other auction sites, being listed as rare. And some of them are very expensive items, okay? Some of you are gonna be surprised in this video. That doesn't make them rare, okay? I'm gonna comment my feedback at the end. First up, this is probably the least expensive item I have to show you guys. This is a Super Nintendo Classic Edition console came out in North America in September of 2017, and it sold on retail store shelves for $79.99. If you believe Nintendo of America, this product is discontinued, but I'm gonna tell you to watch an upcoming video because Nintendo's not gonna completely discontinue this product. They're gonna bring it out every so often and sell it again and again and again to convince speculators and hardcore investors that the item is somehow rare or has an element of demand attached to it. And, and they can flip it on eBay for a higher price. So, so they need to go to their store and they can't just buy one of these. They gotta buy four of them, okay? Because this is a great investment. And no, I don't believe that. I'm just telling you how Nintendo played speculators on this item, which will be, I'll have another video coming out on that topic. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on that. But this is one such example that's being described as rare on eBay. Next up, we have a VGA graded 95 plus from my personal collection, 
Super Mario Gold Edition Amiibo. Now, a lot of people would assume this item is rare. After all, it's one of the highest graded by VGA grading standards. Fortunately, here's the thing. Not too many people are sending factory sealed cases of Amiibo to VGA for grading. I'm one of the odd birds that actually did that, okay? That said, you can sit here and state that the gold Amiibo is somewhat uncommon because it only had two printings. One went to Walmart, one was released everywhere, but it was cut short. That said, it's still not rare. It's uncommon. So even being this high a grade, compared to what's out there already in the marketplace, this is uncommon, not rare. Second example, I'm gonna switch before I get to the Pokemon. This is from my personal collection. It goes back into the bank vault immediately after this video is recorded. This is a $7,000 item. Okay, that's what I'm holding. This is a 1901 legal tender $10 bill graded by PMG in 64 uncirculated condition, exceptional paper quality. Okay, I'll let you see the back. Okay, I bought this at the most recent Heritage Auctions currency sale and I'm taking it to the bank vault directly after the filming of this video. So I figured I'd show you guys. This is a very scarce item because the Friedberg number Currency is graded by a, is cataloged by a Friedberg number, okay? Um, some are more on, more common than others. This happens to be a Friedberg number of 120, which for this particular banknote is scarce and uncommon. It is not rare, okay? This is not a rare item, and yet it's worth $7,000. Just putting it out there. Next up, we have a simple Pokemon trading card game, Booster Box of Ancient Origins. Believe it or not, there are people on eBay listing this as rare. This is anything but rare. In fact, there are warehouses still throughout the country that have stacks of these unsold products in it. Same thing with what's happening in, I'll just comment on this momentarily, Magic the Gathering. A lot of you guys are speculating on mass-produced current market Magic the Gathering sets like War of Spark or Mythic Edition whatever, okay? Bad investment. For the short term, you might be able to make money, okay? Because a lot of speculators are now operating in that sector of the market, and people have no problem, for whatever reason, paying 200 bucks for a booster box of Magic the Gathering cards that came out a year or two ago at $79.99 wholesale distribution price, which I think is ridiculous, okay? I'm gonna give you some advice. Eventually, eventually, not in the near future, eventually that market's gonna cave in. It reminds me exactly like what was happening in the 1980s sports card collecting market that blew up pretty much. It actually imploded on itself in the 1990s, okay? Be very cautious if you're buying a lot of modern Pokemon, Magic the Gathering products, you're keeping it sealed and you're hoping it goes up in value. As soon as one of those products doubles or you make a significant return, I would advise selling the holding and getting out of it, putting your money into something else. Unless you're just a collector who has a passion for it. If that's your thing, hey brother, I get you, okay? Not everyone can go out and buy $7,000 banknotes, okay? So whatever you love, enjoy it, all right? But please, don't list the dang item a year or two out of production and go, my War of the Sparks booster box is now rare. Or I'm seeing even like, Innistrad that came out what 2012 your box at Innistrad Magic the Gathering which is a Magic the Gathering product okay one of the best horror theme sets in Magic the Gathering if you haven't played Innistrad play Innistrad it's excellent okay it, it just has an excellent flavor and feel to the product that said it's not rare okay there's a ton of them in existence demand pushed the price up to 300 to 400 dollars a box okay has nothing to do with rarity Hate to tell you guys, okay? Nothing at all to do with rarity, okay? I'm getting a little emotional because this is one of my pet peeves. Because up until the advent of eBay and the stupid mass-produced Pogs, Beanie Babies, and freaking Funko Pops, people knew better than to put rare in every listing. Now, to give credit to some of the people who are using the term rare in their eBay listings, the term rare has changed a little bit in meaning where a lot of people use the term rare to denote something that's in high demand. So for instance, 
We'll take a video game, a Nintendo game. Let's list Contra on eBay, okay? We list Contra on eBay, and it's in, it's almost like box-kept condition, so it's near mint, okay? And you put Rare in the title, okay? Rare to me, when I see a listing like that, means, okay, it's an in-demand item, meaning someone's going to bid on that because they remember the game Contra, they want one in near-mint condition, and it's in demand. That said, I understand, I don't agree, but I understand where a lot of speculators and hardcore collectors are coming from when they use that kind of moniker to define that item. That said, it is still incorrect, okay? Anybody experienced in the antiques and collectibles trade from what I call the old school, meaning somebody who started out in 1990s, even the early 2000s, they're going to laugh at you when they see that moniker if they don't approach it from the same perspective that I do. In other words, I can look at something like that and I can go, okay, I'll leave the guy alone. I understand what he's getting at. The item is going to sell. You know, he's going to have no problem selling it at 20, 30 bucks. And given the fact that it's a key in demand item, meaning people want to own the original version of Contra or Castlevania or Super Mario Brothers, whatever game we're talking about, that is one of the more in demand games. Okay, he is correct. The problem is, okay, people are sitting here speculating in items based off these false notions of demand and rarity. For instance, I have a copy, I don't have it down here. My copy of Snow Brothers for the original Nintendo system is graded by Wada Games. It came back in 8.0. It was one of the first few games I sent to Wada just to see their grading standards and see what it would get. I don't consider whether you have a graded copy or a loose copy of Snow Brothers. I'm sorry, the game's not rare. It's uncommon, okay? There are very few rare Nintendo games in the grand scheme of things. One that comes to mind is the Nintendo World Championships a Gold or Gray Edition. You can even put the Gray Edition in there, okay, for how few many there are. I would allow that, okay? It's just like in collecting vintage Star Wars figures. If you have a rocket-firing Boba Fett, prototype figure, okay, that's rare. That meets the definition of rare. Even though there's probably more than 25 out there, it still meets the definition of rare for a mass-produced collectible that has a lot of demand that wasn't mass-produced, obviously, because it's a prototype, but it's still in that category of mass-produced collectibles. That's something that you can say is truly rare, okay? But if you have, and I have to laugh when I see this, like a 12-back Han Solo graded by AFA in 90 which is near mint, mint condition, and you guys listed as rare. I'm sorry. Tons of those figures were pretty much held back and are available today in factory sealed and or graded condition. There's nothing rare about that item, okay? It's an in-demand item. So do you see the difference, okay? It's kind of like, like if you have a vinyl cape Jawa figure, okay? From the original vintage Star Wars line, came out in 1977. If you have a loose... Vinyl Cape Jawa figure, it's not rare, it's uncommon. If you have a carded Vinyl Cape Jawa figure from the original 12 back line, that is actually rare. There's very few of those in existence. There may be less than, I think, 100 in existence. Um, that's something that, yes, that'll go for six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000, depending on condition. So that is a rare item for that particular collectible. That said, when you get to coins and currency, I'm sorry, even me spending 7000 on this doesn't cut it. This is not rare. This is scarce. It's uncommon. Is it a good investment? Yeah. I mean, I can, I can see this definitely going up in value, especially given the fact that it's scarce. But compared to other collectibles, would I tell you to buy this? If you're not interested in coins and currency, then no, there's absolutely no need. So I just wanted to do this video just to kind of get that topic trending a little bit and get you guys thinking about it. Because no matter how many articles I write for Antiques and Auction News, no matter how much I talk about this topic, somebody always emails, emails me and says, I have a rare amiibo. And I'm sitting there going, was the thing mass produced? What do you mean you have a rare amiibo? And the guy goes, what do you mean, man? I waited two hours outside GameStop to get that. It was a pre-order only. And I'm sitting there laughing. Yeah, it's a mass produced collectible that Nintendo cut production on to create hype and hysteria for their products. That's not rare, okay? That's all I have, guys. If you want to leave a like, leave a comment, 
subscribe to the channel. I, I cover all topics within the antiques and collectibles trade. Um, I'm happy to respond to comments. Um, thank you for your views and thank you for watching.